I'm going to make some comments, uh, broad comments related to what's happened over the past couple months and uh, what I'm looking forward to for the next year in, turn, in terms of the tone and operation of the commission. I'm going to read this so that it uh, incorporates everything that I want to be sure to include. After months of retreats, memos, public council sessions, and rules committee meetings examining the size, scope, and value of the Neighborhoods Commission, the Neighborhoods Commission has emerged with a clear paint-by-numbers path forward to success. I'll summarize here the direction we'll move this year. The guiding principles for this year are proposed to be operational excellence and communication. This is a year we establish to establish the commission as a credible, productive commission. We have emerged whole after the city's consideration of cutting the commission in half, its concerns about Brown Act compliance, staffing levels, and dishearteningly to many of us, after huge amounts of work put into dozens of projects, we found that the city council, our sponsoring body, says that it doesn't know what we do. To be relevant, to do meaningful work we yearn to do for our city, we must overtly address these concerns in this one short year when this one the short one year window. <clears throat> to avoid this, to work around those concerns or pretend that those concerns don't need to be amended or addressed is to impact the credibility of this important body. Our charter this year is to, number one, stick to our scope, budget letter, measure B, tax oversight, public safety, code enforcement, and transportation. Our approved work plan is relatively broad. It is important to note that the Rules Committee declined to approve impacts, impacts of homelessness matters. We'll be not, we will not be working on homelessness as a commission. For those who'd like to push forward in homelessness as a commission, please bring items forward as part of the budget letter, not as projects or as ad hocs as those have been set for the year. Operational excellence. We'll discuss this more tonight. These are tools and practices to get things done efficiently and effectively. These are things that we are passionate about as individuals. We need to think about how each stakeholder, uh, we need to th uh, this includes to a need, a need to ensure city staff can adequately support our commission's unique approach and unique needs. Communication. It's crucial we have ways to update the community, including the city council, who, as I no mentioned before, said that they just didn't know what we did. We'll discuss this tonight. We need to think about how each stakeholder best receives that information. For example, email, email may not be the best way. Um, it may be texting, it may be a public forum, it may be a newsletter. We can discuss that tonight. As always, to reiterate and to speak to the concern about potential Brown Act compliance concerns, these are the friendly Brown Act rules. The public has a right to know how our commission operates, with deliberations held in the open for current items and for items that may come, come under consideration, with no more than a majority having discussed prior. With our current group awaiting appointments, no more than a current majority of seven commissioners, is it seven? No. Eight. It's eight. No, that eight. current majority of eight commissioners can discuss an item currently under discussion or potentially under discussion. This includes daisy chain conversations. If you talk with someone who's talked, to, talked with seven other commissioners, this is, or eight other commissioners, this is nine. Ask who the com commissioner has already spoken with. Daisy chains are also a violation of the Brown Act. The penalty for violation is at the very least having to recuse yourself from conversations that due to your having talked about them in the first place are important to you. And this is actually a criminal matter, so it's possible for the district, attorney office, the district attorney's office to prosecute. But regardless of consequences, we would expect the commission itself to come under intense scrutiny, damaging our credibility. Those are some comments. I'm, I don't know that they're as rah-rah as folks may have, have thought. I don't want to start the year on a, a downbeat, but I want to just point to that this is a year that, um, you know, we've, we've gotten a lot of very critical feedback. And to ignore or pretend that those items don't need to be overtly, actively uh, addressed and tackled, 
um, and to operate respectfully and with open communication with the city uh, is simply not who we are, but it also is counterproductive, and I think, honestly, it puts the commission at risk. We never formally agreed to, quote, the one-year stay approach that I think a lot of us had liked. We, we don't have that uh, in, uh, in play, but I'm operating as if that is in play because I don't want to have this conversation again with the city next year. So do, any questions on that? Commissioner Semantic? Yeah, not so much questions, but just a comment. And I, I do want to cite this because I think it's very important. You know, our, our mission and scope is um, issues, policies, programs affecting the quality of life of San Jose neighborhoods, safety, transportation, and code enforcement. And I heard what you said about the homelessness, but I still feel the feedback of our neighborhoods, how homeless affects those factors, are still important input. Not maybe to our work plan, but I think these issues, I, I, I don't want to lose sight. I understand the work plan. I don't want to lose sight of the voice of the people that we mm -hmm. represent in our respective districts. So I, for one, and I'm only speaking for myself, will bring up issues that are fed to me for my district as it relates to homeless that have an effect on our mission, whether it be crime, safety, security, and quality of life issues. I just want to comment on that. Thank you. So, Thank you. I think that's very important to state. That. It is important feedback. Thank yeah. you. Commissioner Wilkins. Uh, I, th I thought that was right on, and uh, I was just wondering, uh, are we going to be able to include that in the formal documents on this meeting, or is it just lost in the video of... The comments I just made? Yeah. I can, I can email them, clean them up a little, yeah. <laughs> and email can them we, to Sabrina. We, yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. I'll post them. Do we have yeah. a video? Are we, are we taping? Video. I don't think no, we don't have video. Uh, because Pete isn't here. Well, <clears throat> Commissioner Navarro? So um, I just wanted to thank you. That was really well stated and, and kind of, I just want to, if I could second that, I guess I would. <laughs> thank you. Commissioner Cunningham. Um, weren't your comments considered part of the chair's report? Mm -hmm. Or was this just a, an, an informal? Uh, it is. It's part of the report. Okay. So it should be. Okay. Yeah, yes. No, so, so it'll be yes. captured. So it will be captured. Sure. Yes. That, that, thank that's, you. I was... Speak, speaking to operational excellence. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else? Just, yeah, Commissioner Carter. Yeah, just a quick comment. I think it's a good way to kick off, for lack of a better term, the new year. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting a new start, and we have some fairly clear direction from council of what they'd like to see. So I appreciate your comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. So I'm going to make a comment. Okay. Oh, um, I'm going to second what Commissioner Samanik said, and I believe we have a duty to our neighbors, to our districts, to our neighborhoods, and I'm going to continue to bring up issues that are important to them, specifically in District 7, uh, regardless of what it is, as long as its focus is on code enforcement, safety, quality of life. Thank you. Any other comments, question? All right. Our council liaison. Do we get public comment? No. Is there anybody? Nope. Okay. Are we checking that every time? There I'd like no, to. There was no motion on that, so there was no reason to. Okay, so what are we, are we doing that now every time or not? So there's just to be clear, the protocol is if there's a motion? Okay. Well, it's a motion, but also it says that, you know, state agenda, ask for staff commission, other reports, body ask technical questions, clarification, public comments, then the motion, then the second motion, mm. then the chair repeats the motion, and then there's a discussion, debate, a vote, and the chair announces the results. Okay. Can I just so where are you getting that from? Rob, uh, Rosenberg's Rules of Order. Oh, okay. Shortened. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comment, Jonathan, before I move forward? No, you can go forward. Council is on Jacqueline Genano. <laughs> Council Member Rocha here is here. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Commission. I'm glad to address you all again. So there is a few items that I thought might be of interest of you all since the last time you met, first of being the, the discussion of the structure of the Neighborhoods Commission, which um, I won't touch on since that was already discussed. Um, the city has also impl implemented a new agenda system called Legistar. I don't know if any of you all have seen it, but it's um, an attempt to be more user-friendly, uh, save the user some time, and, and then also make it easier for people to, um, I guess, one of the features that I think is really great that wasn't available before, which was to aggregate 
uh, council discussions on an item from previous meetings. So then if you click on an item, you'll be able to see some of the past history, which is pretty good. Um, there is also a new e-comment feature, which the city clerk's office would really love if you could help spread the, the word on. So if you go on the agenda webpage, say I'm looking at the September 19th agenda, at the top, you'll be able to see e-comment as a link, and then you'll have kind of like a forum. So then you'll see each topic and then a little um, speech bubble, and you can post your comments there. So you could actually do that instead of emailing or even, you know, it's, it's your way to provide your input, and it will go directly to the council members' iPads. Mm -hmm. So it's a really cool feature. I know. Can I just you said yes. there's a link for that? Yeah, I, of course, they send you the link. Oh, okay, that'd be but, great, because uh, I'm not familiar with that. I'd, yeah, I'd well, like it's, um, you know, you check the council agenda, um, where you would typically get our old agenda, which was kind of like a PDF okay. scrolling thing. Mm -hmm. um, you will see the new format, and it is, yeah, so whoever is typing that in, it, it'll excited. be really helpful. Actually, let's just, like, watch. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> just can't What's the name again? Uh, E-comment. Okay. So they call it E-comment. Yes. Um, and then another uh, new, okay, we'll just take a look at it first Thank before you. I move on. <clears throat> it's it's going to be great. Um, so it's actually a pretty labor-intensive process to compile uh, letters from the public um, as we currently do it. And so this is a simpler way, something that's more intuitive with what we've already been using on different, like, you know, web websites. So... That's it right there at the top of the agenda. Would you mind clicking on it? Sorry. This keeps trying to turn itself off. You won't have to restart your computer. <laughs> okay, so. Um, so just. There's a comment um, section oh, wow. through all of it. Yeah, mm. right? Wow. So. <laughs> Can we get that? Yeah. I have a question. Um, Is that only if, it, if it's after or during live sessions? Before and after. So um, the idea is if we click on the topic that we're trying to review or discuss, then um, we'll be able to see all the comments there, up, mm -hmm. even up until the, the meeting is happening. So, yeah, great, uh, great new uh, development. Um, we also have a new independent police auditor, Aaron Zeiser, and I apologize if I'm butchering his name. Um, he comes uh, to the city of San Jose having um, you know, vast and diverse experience in police oversight, criminal justice reform, and civil rights. He used to work for the Department of Justice Civil, uh, civil Rights Division, um, and he led on a number of very complex um, investigations, and he's returned to the Bay Area, and he's been a consultant on uh, several local criminal justice reform and oversight projects, including the Blue Ribbon Commission on Santa Clara County Jails, um, which folks might be familiar with. So welcome to our new independent police auditor. And then, uh, as was mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, the city council discussed the Sunshine Reform Task Force audit. In 2006, the city council formed this Sunshine Reform Task Force to promote open, accessible, and inclusive government. And the objective of the audit was to assess the progress towards meeting the, um, the city's goals um, since it's been codified uh, in 2014. So there's just been a few years. And what the audit saw, uh, said is that the city has made progress. There are you know, obviously a number of things that uh, can still be worked on. But, for example, one of the things that was accomplished was um, the city uh, prepares and posts agendas 10 days in advance of city council meetings as compared to three days, which is required by state law. It's just very quick. Yeah, <laughs> it's just impossible. I can't even imagine having to work with that. And um, there's just so many things to it. So you can view the audit online. And there is also some additional direction uh, from council members Prowlis and Jimenez. Um, and some of those things are, um, uh, yeah, just look at it online. It's, it's kind of a long one, but it's very easy to, to, to see there. And I think that you got advice to take a look at it. And if you're interested, yeah, you'll find it interesting. And that's it. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jacqueline. Do we need to follow a step? Yes. So right. this would be if we have public comments. I don't think we do. And Just double comment. checking. Okay. No motions. No motions. Okay. So we're good Great. there. Next up, 
Sabrina Parra Garcia from the Office of the City Manager. And so technically, we'd actually go item 5C and then staff, Sabrina. We'd read that. I'm sorry? If we're going exclusively by the Rosenberg's rules, Robert's rules, we're supposed to go item 5C, then read that, and then hand it over to Sabrina, just to be super technical, button it all up, inform the public where we are and what we're doing. Okay. So, item 5. Sabrina, I'm going to rewind the tape. <laughs> so, um, the first thing I have is, you guys have all seen, there's a couple of signs here, there's some in the back. These are the new lawn signs that the Office of Immigrant Affairs has created for those who are interested in showing their neighbors and those who drive by that they that the city of San Jose is a welcoming place. So we have some here if you want to take them. If you would like more, you can let me know. We can provide you with more. We have tons. Um, and we appreciate additional help distributing them because we've handed them out to our partners and we still have tons. Um, the other thing I want to bring everyone's attention to is on September 23rd, which is not this Saturday, but next Saturday, the city is having its the largest citizenship workshop that we have. It's going to be at the convention center. It's all day. Um, and it's a place for people to obviously get information about citizenship, but it has occurred to us that with the change in the federal position on deferred action for childhood arrivals, otherwise known as DACA, we may get some questions about that, and we're preparing for that as well. So um, it's from, the sessions are 9, 11, 1, and 2. I have the flyer. I can email it to you all right now, because it's on my phone. Um, <laughs> so you guys can all have the electronic copies to s distribute, and the version I would send you has the Spanish and the Vietnamese flyers as well. We are also looking for help on that day. So if any of you are so disposed to wanting to come in and for one of those sessions or all of them, if you're really excited about this, we would, we would love to have you. Um, and finally, this Sunday is Viva Calle, September 17th. Uh, the, <laughs> the route is, starts into Pantown, cuts over to East Santa Clara Street, goes all the way past 101 where it becomes Alum Rock, goes up to the Alum Rock Villages at White, and then turns and goes all the way down to Lake Cunningham. Um, and this is the closed street event that the city, I think this is the fourth time the city has done this. Um, it's over seven miles, the whole route. You are not required to do the entire route. You can come in, not go anywhere if you don't want. Um, do the whole route. Do it 16 times. It's up to you. Um, the whole point is for people to come in and see the city at something of a slower pace, walking, rollerblading, biking, whatever, scooter kind of things kids do now. I don't know. Um, it's family-friendly. And in addition to just being able to experience the route, there's also a variety of stops we are calling hubs throughout. There's one in Japantown. There's uh, one at the Mexican Heritage Plaza. There's one at Alum Rock Villages. There's one at Lake Cunningham. I think there's actually some in between as well, including one at City Hall, which yours truly is running. Um, so that means that we will have a resource fair, fair here with city departments and some uh, community-based organizations pr providing information. We will have uh, community art projects and some places for people to respond to prompting questions about um, what welcoming means to them. We will also have a stage with um, some performers. We will have a DJ uh, doing music from all over the world. We will have Eritrean community performers doing dances from uh, Africa. Uh, I will actually also be giving a free salsa lesson. So for those who are interested, that's from 12 to 1. Um, and then from 1 to 3, we will have the San Jose Chamber Orchestra uh, performing. So we have kind of a bit of everything. We will also have Veggie Lucian has their Rolling Grange, which is um, it's a food truck that they're using to help local community around uh, the park around Amapush develop a food business of their own and work out the kinks. So they will all be, you will see some of those local food entrepreneurs and what kind of food they're providing and how they do it. They'll be doing um, demonstrations. I think that's it. What, what time is it? The which part? The, the street. Oh, the whole street. Uh, the begins at 10 o'clock, although I expect ro road closures will begin earlier than that. Seven. 
seven. So some of the intersections will still be open as well, but they'll be heavily timed by police. So I encourage you to find ways around. Um, and then streets, the event ends at three and streets begin opening again on a rolling basis um, between three and four o'clock. So just to be clear, and I only know this, seven, the freeway off-ramps are going to be closed. And I believe the whole streets across Alum Rock and coming down the Viva Calle will be eight in the morning. Um, and then they do tend to, even though it ends at three in the past, I've seen it shutting down slowly. So I would recommend that if you are telling people to show up, keep in mind, especially if they have little ones, and not to wait till the very last moment because that happened to me last year, and it's hard to get an eight-year-old across <laughs> when the, um, the cops the, are already getting the cars on the road. Yeah. Um, and just because of this, um, parking is going to be uh, limited. So, I mean, it's, it's available where it's usually available, but uh, there's going to be a lot of people coming to the route. So I encourage you to take public transit or carpool when possible. Are there any questions? No, I just wanted to add. So, um, Viva Calle is meant to get people out of their cars and out into the communities. It happens to be going through the heart of our district. Uh, I want to extend an invitation to everyone. Do not be afraid to come to the east side. There are wonderful businesses that are eager to have you. We have tacos in every corner, <laughs> Chinese food. We have uh, guitar makers, we have piñata makers, anything and everything, Zumba classes, Bollywood dancing, salsa classes. Um, we are excited to have the rest of the city come through our corner and see that we are here. We are a great thriving community. It's so diverse. You'll find anything under the rainbow. You know, I always say in Alum Rock, you can get married. You can get divorced, you can do your taxes, you can eat dinner, breakfast, anything. You can even be buried because we have, you know, a cemetery and funeral services and everything in between. So I really want to extend an invitation. Viva Calle is going to go through District 3, I think, District 3 downtown. Um, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. District 5, which is my district, and, and it's going to end at District 8 out in um, uh, like Cunningham yeah. Park. Yeah. Um, so, again... Please come out. Don't be afraid. We're wonderful people in the east side. I guarantee you, um, we'll have ton. We'll have tons of fun, and and we look forward to when it comes to your neighborhood, so we can go out and visit your neighborhoods as well. So. Commissioner Navarro. So it went through ours last time in D6 and Willow Glen Rose Garden area, and we were happy to have it there. Um, I'm in D5 a lot, as you already know, um, and. I don't know if you know this, but they're also going to have the world's largest zip line. So I'm super excited. I am actually also running um, a hub myself off Alum Rock. Um, and we're going to have dancers. We are definitely going to have, it's open to everyone of all ages from babies to seniors. Um, they will, last year I think they had um, places where if you wanted to rent roller blades or roller skates. Um, so there's an a huge amount of opportunity, uh, not just for the businesses to come out, which is great. We get to know that area. Um, but for us to get out and walk and really experience the beauty of San Jose everywhere and everyone. Um, but that zip line, it's kind of going to be monumental. I'm really excited because I'm hoping I can make it there to do the zip line. So it's the, from what I gathered, if I'm right, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to be the world's um, biggest one. And it's going to be zip lining I think, from on, on Cunningham Park over there in the east side through D5 and D8. So yes, do come. We're great. I'm over there. I'm over here. I'm over here. <laughs> it's wonderful. Anyone else? So then we would go, any public comments? None? Perfect. So then we can move on. Thank you. Okay.